Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. The work week off to a rough start for some people at a Southside convenience store. San Antonio police say the trouble started before the business was even open with a man breaking in and then attacking the workers there. Katrina Weber spoke to another man who witnessed it all and says he did what he could to help. The tape all around the parking lot shows this store at Fair Avenue and Interstate 37 is off limits, a crime scene. San Antonio police say the trouble happened while the 7-Eleven was still closed for other reasons. That a man smashed through the locked glass door before four this morning, then went on the attack against employees. Man, they were so terrified. They, was, they were crying and screaming for help. And I, I didn't know what else to do but to go in there and help them. Mario Garza well, well, says he did. noticed a commotion as he rode past on his bicycle. He broke out the window. He was trying to kill the, he was trying to kill the ladies and I, I got in the way. Garza says the man who had forced his way into the store was armed with a pair of screwdrivers and chasing the employees. He was nicked on his arm as he tried to step in and help. He wasn't trying to take the money, he wasn't trying to take nothing. He was just in there just trying to just stab the lady for some reason, I don't know why. With a bandage on his wrist, Garza was soon back on his bike and back on his way. The suspect was taken away in an ambulance. Police still have no idea what prompted this whole thing. They say the suspect had just a minor cut on his hand, but they had some concerns about his health and safety, so they had him taken to a hospital. Reporting from the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this noon, police say that a homeowner fought off a man who broke into his home, and now officers say that suspect could be behind some other break-in attempts. Police called to a home on Adair Bluff, that's on the southeast side of town. Police say the suspect broke into an elderly man's home this morning while the victim was asleep. However, the homeowner woke up and the pair of them got into a fight. The victim was able to grab the suspect's gun and fire several shots. The suspect not hit and ran away. However, police caught up with him a few a few streets over. The homeowner was hurt, but he will be okay, we're being told. According to police, the suspect tried to break into several other homes, but it's not clear how many. Police teaming with Crime Stoppers calling for your help in finding a robbery suspect who took off in a woman's car. Officers tell us this is the man they're looking for. Last month, a woman was sitting in her car near Petrenko and Highway 151 over on the west side. At some point, a man walked up to her and asked for the time. A few minutes later, he came back and opened her car door, demanding she get out of the car. The woman says she thought the suspect had a gun, so she did what he told her to do, and that's when police say the suspect took off. Officers tell us the man appears to have a tattoo on his right forearm. If you know who this person is and where police can find him, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Their home was left in ruins. Now a family is wondering what they will do next. San Antonio fire crews arrived to find flames coming from the home early this morning on the northeast side near 1604 and Lookout. Stephen Cavasso shows us the destructive path of that fire, which forced the family from their home. Fire crews have cleared out of the area since that fire happened hours ago, but now that the sun is out, we're getting a clearer look at that damage left behind and investigators say that's up to $300,000 in damage. Now we have spotted the family that's picking up and sorting through some of their belongings, which they tell me isn't a whole lot. Now we spoke to them briefly off camera and they tell us almost everything they had is now gone. According to the San Antonio Fire Department, flames were seen coming from the second story of the home early Monday morning. Everyone inside was able to get out safely. Crews battle the flames, which ripped through the second story. Now, that's where most of the damage is at. It's still not clear what sparked this fire. The cause is still under investigation, but the home is considered a total loss. Now, the family will be staying with a relative until they figure out what they'll be doing next. Now, despite this loss, they say they haven't lost hope and are just thankful to have each other. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. President Joe Biden expected to announce new mask guidance tomorrow. He is expected to release updated outdoor masking, mask wearing guidance during his state of the pandemic remarks. In November review, the Journal of Infectious Diseases found that less than 10% of COVID-19 infections studied occurred outside. Several states have outdoor mask mandates in place. And vaccines appear to be getting easier and easier to find across San Antonio. The city now even offering their homebound services which essentially delivers Mac vaccines to those in need. Max Massey explains this program and just how a new obstacle the city is trying to overcome vaccine hesitancy.
And it's very important because I think um, if we want to ever, ever get back to any kind of normalcy, we need to get those vaccinations to the folks. In an effort to vaccinate as many people across the Alamo City as possible, paramedics were loading up early this morning for the new homebound program. So the homebound program is a vaccination, the COVID-19 vaccination uh, program that's really uh, built and designed for folks that can't really make it out to the to the community site. This program works as a sort of vaccine delivery service to those most in need. The team works strategically with the Food Bank, Meals on Wheels, Metro Health District, and other community partners throughout San Antonio to compile that list, and then come morning, they head out to vaccinate. We give about 1,000 to 1,200 uh, home vaccinations a week. The Alamo Dome drive through Vaccination Distribution Center is one of the most popular places in San Antonio for people to get their vaccines, but now the problem city officials are seeing, people more and more being hesitant to actually get the vaccine. More than 50% of the eligible population has received at least one dose of the vaccine. That's more than a million, um, but we're starting to reach that point where we need more people to get that vaccine so that we can get back to normal. We're a mess. So now the city is thinking more outside the box. What we're trying to do is educate and inform residents that it's a safe and effective vaccine that's built on science. Um, but the most fun way to do that is to work with local musicians and artists. So we've got some songs, music videos, murals that are coming out to our, our districts. If you're interested in taking part in the homebound program to have a vaccine brought to you, you can reach out via 311 or to this email on your screen, sfdmvp at sanantonio.gov. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. As well, the city kicking off its mobile vaccine clinic at the Antioch Sports Complex on the east side over the weekend. The next clinic happening right now at the Knights of Columbus Hall on Ray Ellison Boulevard. That's on the city's west side. You must be 16 years or older. The clinic closes at 5 today. If you want some more information about this and other clinics, go to our website at ksat.com. In the race to vaccinate Americans, there's troubling new data from the CDC. The agency says millions of people may have missed the recommended time frame for their second dose of the two shot vaccines, while nearly a quarter of the country is hesitant to get any vaccine at all. That's what Max Massey was just telling us. Now this, while the one dose Johnson & Johnson shot is back in business, at least 32 states now resuming distribution after it was paused following reports of extremely rare blood clots. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert with more. This morning, the Johnson & Johnson one dose COVID vaccine going into arms once again after a temporary pause due to rare blood clots in some people who received that shot. The vaccine was never conclusively linked to the clots, but it now comes with an updated fact sheet. In Michigan, Emily Murray was one of the first in line once the suspension was lifted. You have to decide if the risk is worth it to you. Out of the almost 8 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson shot, the CDC found 15 women suffered from extremely rare blood clots. The CDC concluding the vaccine's benefits outweigh the risks. We can now say, you know, we take this very seriously. We've looked at it. Now let's get back and get people vaccinated. But getting Americans fully vaccinated is proving challenging. The CDC releasing new data showing that about 5 million people may have missed the recommended time frame for their second dose of the two shot vaccines. And a new ABC News Washington Post poll finds 73% of those not yet vaccinated said they would not take the Johnson & Johnson shot and nearly a quarter of Americans say they don't want to get a shot at all. Nakia Hubbard heard used to be one of those skeptics, but after she tested positive for COVID-19 while 24 weeks pregnant and ended up on a ventilator, she's now urging others to protect themselves and get vaccinated. Do not wait until it's too late because it can go so bad, so fast. Important words. That was Andrew Dibbert reporting. European Union, meanwhile, reportedly set to welcome back Americans this summer as long as they're fully vaccinated. You will have to prove that you're fully vaccinated. Coming up in the next half hour, what you need to know if you are planning a trip overseas. Showers and storms in the forecast this week. We'll talk timing and how much rain. Coming up. The Spurs looking to continue their road success tonight in the nation's capital. More on that in a minute in sports. A nonprofit joining forces with a local school district to achieve a common goal to develop strong and skilled leaders. How the organization is helping East Central ISD reach that goal.
A nonprofit will be partnering up with six districts around the state to help them thrive so students get the most out of their education. One of those districts is right here in San Antonio. The Holdsworth Center is set to give East Central ISD a boost through a five year partnership. The organization will invest six million dollars to develop leaders who can rise to any challenge, but more importantly, help students succeed. We've aspired to do that for a very long time and have done a lot of work around that, but the Holdsworth Center really um, is the best partner to support us in, in realizing that vision. AGB Chairman Charles Butt founded the Holdsworth Center in 2017. It now works with 19 districts around the state. Each year, six districts are chosen for the partnership and the investment goes toward campuses as well as training for teachers, principals and district leaders. Installing smoke alarms in your home can reduce your chances of dying in a house fire by half. On Saturday, May 8th from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m., the American Red Cross serving Central and South Texas in partnership with the San Antonio Fire Department is going to fulfill requests to install free smoke alarms in San Antonio. You can schedule an appointment at any ksapcommunity.com. Looking outside with live cam, we got a pretty Monday going. Sun has come out. It was not out just about an hour and a half ago. Those clouds are breaking up. Sun is out. Temperatures will be warm again today, probably near 90 where we were over the weekend, but a little more humid today. The aquifer is down again, six tenths of a foot to 648.8. We need some rain to help it out. There are some chances on the way. In the pollen count, molds are high. No surprise here, but pecan jumped up. It's in a moderate category, one tenth. We'll talk about some of these rain chances, thunderstorms, and how much rain we may see. It's coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Hopefully getting into one of those patterns where you get two, three days of rain and maybe two, three days of sun and then it just kind of continues. That would be wonderful. That's a good springtime pattern for us. Uh, it is looking more that way, guys, because, you know, on Friday we did get some beneficial rain. Came with some hail, too, for parts of San Antonio. But we're moving back into a pattern now where we could get some more rain. Looking at the time lapse, clouds this morning. Man, the humidity was way up there. It was so dry this weekend, but the humidity surged in this morning. That resulted in some low clouds. And we're still reporting cloudy skies at the airport. 76 southeasterly winds at about 13. Dew point is at 62, so that number's still pretty high. Still feels pretty sticky out there. Let's take a look at some of the weather headlines and what we have headed our way. Uh, today we start off with the cloud cover, but we should go partly cloudy by the afternoon. Tomorrow, chance for a few showers and storms. Uh, about a 30% chance as it stands right now. And on Wednesday, and I think especially Wednesday night, we'll have a, a decent chance for some good downpours, maybe a line of showers and storms. And that could add up to some decent rainfall totals. There are some estimates that gets, up, gets us close up uh, to an inch of rain, perhaps, which would be really good. I'd say half inch to an inch as it stands right now as we get through uh, maybe into Thursday morning. Uh, temperature 76 at the airport, 77 Randolph, 80 at Stinson. You can see some of the cloud cover that's beginning to erode, but the, the morning clouds may go away. We're still going to have some of those high clouds streaming over top of us, so that's why we're calling for partly cloudy conditions today. And the clouds still a little bit thicker as you go out west. 73 Uvalde, 75 right now in Carrizo Springs, but 80 is where we're seeing more sun. 82 right now in Kennedy and 81 uh, in Gonzales. Two points are up. You can feel it. The dew points are in the 60s. That doesn't really change the next couple of days, so it's going to remain humid. High temperatures today close to 90. Again, about where we were over the weekend, maybe a little bit warmer down to the south and west, mid 90s there. Uh, as far as the setup, we can look at the water vapor and we can really kind of picture what's going on in the upper parts of the atmosphere. We've got our big trough out west. This is the one that will swing through and bring us our best chance of rain Wednesday night. But in the meantime, out ahead of it, there are little disturbances that are going to be rolling into Texas. And there's one tomorrow that I think is going to help to kick off some showers and storms. Isolated, but at least it's there. And as we look at the forecast, Again, partly cloudy today, but tomorrow we'll start to see a few showers out west initially. This is around 7 a.m. 
and then by midday, this activity starts to spread east. I think it'll be mostly in the form of showers, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got a few rumbles of thunder as well, and that goes into the afternoon. In fact, this model does show maybe a few thunderstorms. It'll be hit or miss tomorrow, but some of these could put down some decent rain. And then as we get into, say, tomorrow night, still some showers around. And I do want to watch what happens out west. There could be some stronger storms out there. There is a marginal risk for severe weather tomorrow evening, mainly for the hill country. And then the best chance is going to be up across parts of West Texas, Midland, Odessa, Abilene up to Wichita Falls. We're going to fast forward now to Wednesday. Marginal risk shifts a little bit further east. I think with a line of showers and storms again Wednesday night, we'll watch for the potential of maybe a couple strong storms there. So here's how it plays out in the seven day forecast. 30% chance tomorrow, 30% chance Wednesday, 60% chance Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Temperatures stay in the 80s this week. And then once that passes through Thursday morning, we'll get the chance to clear out Thursday afternoon. And as it stands right now, Friday, Saturday, Sunday look pretty nice, although it does warm up again. Uh, of course, the big question is how much rain are we going to get out of this again? It looks like maybe a half an inch up to an inch in some isolated cases. Uh, if you get underneath one of these downpours, which will be very beneficial, guys. Boy, bring it on. Thank you. Yep. Coming up in just a second, the Spurs picking up a little momentum heading into the final stretch. Going to keep it going tonight in Washington and the soccer season for SAFC is about to kick into gear. A look at the changes coming up. As the Spurs make their final push towards the playoffs, they are relying on veteran DeMar DeRozan, believe it or not. He almost didn't play Saturday night because the Pelicans, first head coach Greg Poppins, thought about sitting him because of a right quad contusion. Ooh, thank goodness he didn't continue to think about that. He suited up and had a monster night. Every bit of it was needed, especially since the Pelican star Zion Williamson was having a monster night as well, and they needed DeMar to counteract Zion's output. He opened up with this dunk and went on to score 33 against the Spurs, but DeRozan was right there with him, just about shot for shot, helping the Spurs out to a 31-24 lead after one with Derek White picking up the slack where he left off against Detroit. He finished with 22, included four threes. The Pelicans outscored the Spurs 32-24 in the third to make this game down the stretch. A tight one with Brandon Ingram also adding 24 for New Orleans, then let the shooting shot show begin. In the final two minutes of the game between Durar and Williamson with DeMar scoring 11 of his team high 32 in the final seven and a half minutes for the night. He hit nine of 10 of his buckets inside the paint, got a shot when he wanted. He also went 12 of 12 from the free throw line. Spurs won at 110-108. After the game, DeMar was asked about taking it right to Zion. He didn't have any problem with that. He loved it. Matter of fact, he said, I'll go one-on-one -on -one with just about anybody. All right, so that road trip continues tonight, 6 o'clock. Miami Heat, remember that start time was a little early on the East Coast, and then they take on the Heat Wednesday at 7, and then they're at Boston on Friday, and they're back home to host Philadelphia this Sunday. We are just five days away from the start of the new USL season, and San Antonio FC has a lot to look forward to since they are coming off one of the best seasons in franchise history last year. The Alamo City Club just wrapped up their five-game preseason this weekend, finishing with only one win in that span, but three of those matches were against MLS competition. Now head coach Alan Marcina enters his second season at the helm with several notable changes on the roster. Gone is perennial offensive spark plug Christian Perano and the constant scoring of forward Luis Solignac. But that means more of a chance for the returners like local standout Jose Gallegos to shine on the pitch. A couple of the returners have to be the guys to step up and uh, definitely try to implement it in the locker room as well. Have everyone bought in and uh, have everyone on the same page before the before the first game of the season. Uh, we've done a good job so far, and I think the guys have responded well. We are, as a collective, incredibly excited um, to be, have the opportunity to, to play in front of our, our fans, the best fans in the league. Um, so we're excited for how many that will be present. You know, we're going to put our best foot forward and hopefully get the W for them. New arrival Santiago Patino appears ready to strike as well. The forward scored the opening goal of SAFC's final preseason match against RGV yesterday afternoon. The match finished in a 2-2 tie. So here's a look at that matchup to get things started. That's coming up at Toyota Field against Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC Saturday at 730 in the evening. And real quick, 
Sean Lee, Dallas Cowboy linebacker, has announced his retirement just a few minutes ago after 11 oh, wow. seasons. So, yeah, he spent a lot of time injured. When he was on the field, he was something to be reckoned with, but uh, unfortunately suffered a lot of injuries and decided after 11 seasons it's time to hang up the cleats. Oh, well. Yeah. Wish him the best of luck. Yep. Coming up, the Supreme Court set to take on a hot button issue, the Second Amendment. Details on a case that could lead to expanded gun rights in several states. And the European Union is working to allow tourists back to its countries, but there will be some rules to follow. Details coming up in the next half hour. And as the European Union considers when to reopen its doors and welcome American travelers once again, Coming up today at 5, 12 on your site's Marilyn Moritz explains what you need to know, the deals you might be coming across, and just how soon you could be backpacking your way through Europe again. The Biden administration expanding a program to feed up to 34 million school children again during the summer. The expanded program uses funds from the coronavirus relief package that was approved back in March. The Agriculture Department announced it today. It'll continue through the summer payments program that replaced school meals. Families of eligible children will receive $6.82 per child for each weekday or $375 per child over the summer. The White House says the U.S. is sending support to India to help with the dramatic surge in COVID-19 cases there. ABC's Julia McFarland has more. India is being consumed by COVID-19. In the world's second most populous country, a wave of infections is overwhelming resources. More than 350,000 cases in the last 24 hours alone, breaking global records for the fifth day running. Hospitals in Delhi forced to turn away patients. There is not enough oxygen and not enough beds to treat the sick. This doctor tells a desperate crowd outside his hospital that they are running out of oxygen and cannot admit any more patients. What little oxygen supply there is in Delhi is now being administered in cars, taxis, even rickshaws. Oxygen tankers, India's most precious commodity, are now being escorted by police in New Delhi. The demand is so great, oxygen is now being sold on the black market. In central India, desperate relatives of coronavirus patients seen looting oxygen supplies from a hospital storeroom. This man has been working around the clock, cremating the dead. The bodies are coming so fast, he says they've had to construct a new crematorium in a nearby park. Last night, the White House announced that raw materials urgently needed in order to manufacture the Indian Covishield vaccine are being immediately made available for India. The U.S. is also sending medical supplies and a team of experts, but critics say it's still not enough. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. U.S. regulators are meeting for the first time in over a decade. They're trying to consider scaling back approvals from several drugs that are for cancer. The cancer drugs in question have failed to show that they extend or improve life. Each year, the U.S. approves dozens of new uses for cancer drugs based on early signs that they think can slow or shrink tumor growth. But sometimes the promising results don't translate into longer life for cancer patients. The FDA now starting a three-day meeting tomorrow on this issue. Outside with live cam, we may not see a lot of sun over the next few days, a little bit right now, but uh, clouds roll in. But that's okay if they're bringing rain with them. We don't, we don't mind that too much. Uh, I agree. We'll, t we'll take a little bit more rain. We got some last week. Let's keep that trend going. Uh, looking at high temperatures across the state, starting to feel a lot more like spring. These are the forecast high temperatures today, and we're calling for upper 80s, near 90 here in San Antonio. A lot of places out west Texas will be in the 90s, Laredo for sure, uh, low to mid 90s for those folks. So uh, very warm. And, and looking at the dew points, we'll have a nice dry line setting up today. This is going to start to come into play next couple days as the dry line scoots a little bit further east. Sometimes you can get some thunderstorm development on these dry lines. Not a lot of it, but if you have some upper level support, it can happen. And we're thinking that may be the case next couple days with the dry line. We'll keep an eye on that. But dew points will be in the 60s here in San Antonio, much of East Texas and very dry out in West Texas behind the dry line where they're getting westerly winds. Uh, temperatures for us today, 76 right now, 80 stints and 82 down there in Pleasanton. Notice they're seeing more sun. 
little thicker cloud cover trying to work in around Holotis, Bernie Stage, Bandera. But uh, these clouds will thin out some as we get into the afternoon, and we'll be looking at partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures again up near 90 for a high. Southeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We're going to talk more about the rain chances and uh, when they'll be here coming up in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. The Supreme Court decided this morning to hear an appeal to expand gun rights in the United States. That case will most likely be argued in the fall. At that time, the Supreme Court will consider the scope of the Second Amendment in a case concerning a New York law that stops people from carrying concealed handguns in public. It's been more than a decade since the justices ruled on a case concerning the right to bear arms. New York is among eight states that limit who has the right to carry a weapon in public. Turning now to the outrage that's growing in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, over the fatal police shooting of Andrew Brown Jr. ABC's Rena Roy reports his family viewing body cam footage for the first time today, and a local state of emergency has been issued as protests there continue. No justice! No Protesters in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, have been demanding transparency in the fatal police shooting of 42-year-old father of seven, Andrew Brown Jr. And now his family is seeing body camera footage of the deadly incident for the first time. And now I gotta live every day, my newborn, without even getting a chance to meet him at all. My God, my God. And that's gonna hurt me every day. I just want justice. According to the Pasquotank Sheriff Department, the shooting unfolded last Wednesday morning as deputies who were wearing body cameras were executing warrants related to felony drug charges. EMS, we've got one male, 42 years of age, gunshot to the back. A neighbor who says she witnessed the shooting says Brown did not pose a threat to the officers when they opened fire. He was nonviolent. I can, anybody that knew him would tell you that. He was driving away. Officials have placed seven sheriff's deputies on paid administrative leave as they investigate what exactly happened. If any of my deputies broke any laws or violated any policies that come out through this investigation, they will be held accountable. One of the attorneys representing Brown's family says they were told that investigators did not find any drugs or weapons at the scene. It's inexplicable why when a black person, especially a black man, runs from the police not posing any threat of violence to them that they still see fit to shoot them in the back. In North Carolina, body camera footage can only be released publicly through a court order. The governor and the sheriff's department have been calling for that, and a judge could approve the release as early as today. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Action and anime went head to head over the weekend in the box office. Still ahead, weekend estimates for the top five films. The European Union now set to welcome American travelers once again, but there are some restrictions, what you need to know after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Apple employees will now be able to get vaccinated in the comfort of their own office. The tech giant announcing a partnership with Walgreens to provide their workers COVID-19 vaccines at work. It comes as Apple CEO Tim Cook attempts to bring more employees back to the office. The move makes Apple one of the first of the tech giants to offer vaccine appointments for workers. Meanwhile, the outgoing CEO of GameStop will reportedly walk away from his job with millions of dollars. According to an analysis conducted by the Wall Street Journal, George Sherman is set to leave the company with vested stock now valued at roughly $290 million. Sherman led the company for just two years and is expected to leave the company by the end of July. And shares of Reddit favor Dogecoin falling this morning after attempting a brief recovery over the weekend. The crypto currently trading at about 26 cents, this after touching near a record high of 43 cents just last week. The crypto, which originally started as a joke, has picked up support from both Elon Musk as well as billionaire Mark Cuban. And that's your Cheddar News business and tech update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The luxury home market in San Antonio continues to boom. Sales of the top 5% most expensive homes here grew 56%, making it the 10th fastest growing luxury market in the nation. 
The Alamo City's growth this category substantially eclipsed the 41% rise in luxury sales nationally. The growth in these home sales far surpassed the local market's overall year-over-year -year growth of almost 14% in the first quarter, according to the Business Journal of Analysis of Sabre Data. There could be thousands more jobs in the U.S. thanks to Apple, the tech giant announcing it has increased its investment in manufacturing here in the U.S. to huh, $430 billion dollars. That's $80 billion more than its original investment. The company says the money will be used to build new facilities and create 20,000 new jobs over the next five years. Apple also plans to support new technology like 5G and artificial intelligence. Americans will soon be able to travel to the European Union as long as they're fully vaccinated. This more than a year after it closed its borders to most travelers. ABC's Gio Benitez has all the details for us. Americans are showing huge interest right now in international travel. In fact, online searches for those flights are just soaring. And now this headline from the EU. The New York Times reporting vaccinated Americans will be allowed to visit places like Paris, Barcelona and Rome again after the pandemic closed borders over a year ago in Europe. The head of the European Union telling the Times all 27 member states will accept unconditionally all those who are vaccinated with vaccines that are approved by EMA. Many European economies rely on international tourism. EU officials are now seeing vaccines as the solution. Americans wanting to travel can do so with a green passport by presenting either a negative COVID test, a positive antibody test, or a vaccine certificate from the CDC. Companies like Common Pass and Travel Pass, they're beta testing mobile vaccine passport apps to speed up the process. The news already helping the airline industry just days after other countries like Iceland announced plans to reopen to overseas travelers. Flight searches jumped 201 percent and people are rushing to book the deals. Miami to Madrid round trip this summer, about 300 bucks. New York to Rome in the fall, about 400. But we should tell you that even if the EU makes this recommendation, it's very likely that each country individually may be making its own decision. Still, though, we do know that the French president has said he wants to open up France to vaccinated Americans. Gio Benitez, ABC News at Newark International Airport. But with weather like this, why in the world would you want to go anywhere, I ask? Good point. I mean, it is nice. I thought the weekend was incredible. The air was dry, so the evenings were really nice. The humidity has come back a little bit. But all in all, we're off to a pretty nice start today. 76 the high so far, 67 the low this morning. The averages are 83 and 61. Eh, we'll be pretty close to the averages. Uh, the records are 97 and 45, set back in 1984 and 1913. There are some rain chances on the way. Just what we like to see. We'll talk about that 7-day forecast coming up. Beautiful weather out there. We're hoping for a little bit more rain. We could use a little. We could use a lot. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think you're right. And real quick, I do want to mention that we'll have a full moon tonight. The Ooh. pink super moon. It's not pink. It's not going to be pink, but it's called that because it has something to do with moss or it equates. I to thought it was because it looks pink because it's so close. No, it, it doesn't. Have to, it. It's uh, it's the pink full moon because it has to do with some plants or moss that was that color in that time frame but the super moon it is a little bit brighter a little bit larger we get i think two this year so this is one of them good just adds up you should be able to see it at least a little bit tonight uh and yes we do need the rain uh san antonio 3.86 for the year that is below average del rio is only at 1.19 and this is on top of our departure from normal last year which we had quite a bit of at least uh, in the year so uh, some rain would be good, and as we go outside right now, 76 degrees, 80 stints in 79, Kelly 77 at Randolph. Southeasterly winds pumping in a ton of moisture. It's sticky out there. That led to some clouds this morning, and some of those are still hanging around. 72, Bernie Stage, 77, New Braunfels, 77, Randolph, 83, Pleasanton. You get into some warmer temperatures down south, a little cooler underneath where we have some thicker clouds, and that includes Rock Springs, Uvalde, Kerrville, where you're still in the mid-70s. Dew point tracker shows dew points are going to st stay high today, tomorrow, and the Wednesday, but they do fall off as we get uh, behind our front Thursday. So uh, a couple days here where it is going to be fairly sticky. The, the hope is, though, that that moisture leads to some rain. 
Satellite picture shows those uh, thicker clouds that we were mentioning still holding on here at Lake Eagle Valley, Rock Springs, Kerrville. Some breaks here in San Antonio. And on top of that, we have some high clouds uh, over top of everything. So it's going to be a partly cloudy day for most of us. And as we zoom out some, you can see the flow of the atmosphere. Everything's moving southwest to northeast. And then you'll notice there's some rain back out to the west. So that's our storm system that will be headed our way. And it's a big one. It's going to bring some energy to Texas, and that's going to give us the lift that we're hoping for uh, along with that front to give us some showers and storms. Uh, out ahead of it, we will have some disturbances rolling in. That includes tomorrow, and I think that'll be enough to generate some activity tomorrow. It'll be isolated, but some downpours will be possible. And as we look at the forecast, this is today. It stays dry, but tomorrow we'll begin with some showers out west. Those will work their way east across the area. Hit or miss uh, downpours, maybe a couple rumbles of thunder. Can't rule it out. Even during the afternoon, this shows maybe a, a thunderstorm or two popping up. We're not looking for widespread severe weather tomorrow. If we do see any severe weather, it's likely going to be out west. But we'll keep an eye on things. And as we get into Tuesday night, still some chances for showers. And that continues over into Wednesday night into Thursday. And this is newly updated here, so this gives us some more information. And you can see that that slight risk has been pushed a little bit further east. Uh, as we get into tomorrow, not a surprise, just based on what we're seeing with the models. Again, one or two storms mixed in there tomorrow, and that stretches all the way up into North Texas. As we get into Wednesday, that marginal risk is still sort of in a similar area. So we're in that time, year, uh, time of year, that time frame, where we could see some uh, of those stronger storms. We'll keep an eye on things next few days. Temperatures up near 90 today, southeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then tomorrow, 85, 30% chance of showers and storms, 30% chance on Wednesday, and then a 60% chance Wednesday night into Thursday. I think that window is when we have our best chance to get some good rain. 83 Thursday and clearing, 82 Friday, and temperatures will be warm this weekend, guys. Thank you, Justin. A Boston-born Celtic punk band is dropping its first new album in four years. What the lead singer says about the new project still ahead in the spotlight. Competition at the box office proved to be too much for Godzilla and Kong. The film dropped to third place. What new contender dethroned the hit movie? We have that after the break.